What's up guys? On today's video, we're gonna be putting the fuel system in the Supra. Got a lot of nice components going into this. Should support some big horsepower. It's one of the last things I need to do before I can get this thing started. Stick around and follow us in the process. This is a six micron filter. I'm putting in dash eight fittings up to the rail. You could do dash 10, I think for my power that I'll be making for the foreseeable future. I don't need dash 10. One cool thing I am doing is a direct mount regulator. So this will go directly onto the fuel rail. I don't have to mount it in the car anywhere. And then I have some fittings here and I'm not 100% sure that's is gonna work, but fingers crossed it will. I have some fittings to allow me to put the flex fuel sensor right off of this so I don't have to mount that either. But like I just said, I'm not 100% sure if that's gonna work. You're gonna find out on camera with me right now. These are pretty slick. They are adapters to take this GM push style fitting and adapt it to AN. So the idea is that this goes on the back of the fuel rail. It has a flex fuel sensor hanging off of it. I think it will work. Feels pretty sturdy. That'd be pretty slick. That would be a rat's nest. I'm not a fan of people who don't pay their rent on time. So I'm gonna have to evict these guys. All right, this right here is the stock fuel filter. I have a nice mount to replace this with my new aftermarket fuel filter. So I think I need to pull down all this plastic cover, get these lines exposed, probably pull this off. I wanna take the factory lines out of the car. I don't wanna just leave them in here since they're, they're not gonna be being used. So uh, let's get to it. Has some weird fasteners. Man, I had this problem on my Lexus before I had the lift. This fitting into the fuel filter is so tight, it's crazy. And without a car lift, man, it's hard to get leverage on there. Just pulled the factory fuel feed out of the car. I didn't really video it because it wasn't a whole lot to see. It's kind of hard to get it out back over the axle though, I will say that. So now I'm gonna put in the new radium filter and start on running the feed from the filter up to the fuel rail. That's how you drop your $100 filter. Man, PTFE hose is such a pain in the ass. Okay, go throw this in the car and mark the length and bring it back out. Cut this. Feed line is in, it's hooked up down to the filter. Routing's pretty nice, very far away from the steering and pretty happy with it. Might end up doing a, a zip tie somewhere along the engine block just to keep it from rubbing on anything. So next up is I'm gonna put on my direct mount regulator with the flex fuel sensor in line. Probably pull this thing back off. I'm just gonna put it on, make sure it has plenty of clearance back there. 
and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I changed my mind off camera. I dry fitted it, seems good. So I went ahead and put in my fuel pressure sensor and tightened everything up. Um, one thing to note, this fitting was in this regulator uh, right out of the box and it was not tight. I'm really glad I checked it. So let's go ahead and get this thing in. Gonna have to swap the side on the pressure sensor. It's hitting the block. I tried to shove the camera up there to show, but it doesn't really uh, portray easily. Um, the fitting for my return line is way up there. There's no way you'd be able to get this line on there and tighten it up. So what I'm gonna do is probably pull the fuel pressure regulator out of the car, attach the line to it, and have it, I don't know, come down to somewhere in this neighborhood next to the filter. And I'm gonna put a union in it right here so I can I can disconnect the fuel line from below and you can actually pull the engine out easily that way. Which, of course, I don't have a union, so I just ordered one. It's gonna be two days. All right, let's, let's get it done. I'm gonna go ahead and get the fuel pump hanger ready to put in the car. I will have to put my uh, fuel level sensor on here once I get the one out of the car. I bought this used. Um, it was set up for three of these pumps. I'm only gonna do one for now. All right, I didn't video it, but I just pulled off the OEM fuel pressure or fuel level sender. So I'll get this mounted up. Interesting to note, Super has a fuel temperature sensor, which I don't think I'll be using, but it's cool that it has it. It's ready to go back in the car. Nice and cleaned up. Man, they sure don't give you a whole lot of room to spin this thing. I didn't film it because it didn't really seem necessary. I just took off the shield that goes over the fuel tank. I also lowered the fuel tank just a hair and I have fed the Dash 8 feed line into the trunk. I think I'll feed the Dash 6 return down. Um, it is definitely a pretty tight fit with this hose. But I need to get my length right so I can go put my fitting on, which I couldn't really do without feeding it up here first. Other thing I'm gonna do while I'm in here is take out the factory feed um, since I won't be using that. And it's just kind of in the way. Or Sorry, the factory return. All right, it's probably about two weeks since I filmed any clips of the fuel system. The fuel fittings in the top of the radium hanger were leaking. And I'm not sure if I have a clip of that to show. I don't think I do, but both of these fittings were leaking. Here's what the old one looks like. This is the old feed fitting. They were leaking um, within like the body of it, not at the base where that O-ring is. So I took one of them apart. I put new O-rings in it, still leaked. I reached out to Radium and they said, hey, we've actually updated that design. We'll sell them to you for 50% off. Which, honestly, if I had a auto parts uh, manufacturing business and I had fittings that were leaking because of a faulty design, probably would have sent me them for free. Anyways, uh, like $60 later, and that's 50% off, I have my new fittings, about to try it out. You'll notice that I have a red and blue fitting here that was sent to me uh, by a mistake, but since it's under the fuel, the, the cover that goes here, I'm not, not too concerned about it. So, I'm about to power the pump up and cross my fingers that this project is complete. Just ran it for, I don't know, probably a minute just to walk up the front of the car, make sure there's no leaks up here, up there, make sure there's no leaks back here. Come back here, feed was leaking. 
I'm hoping I just didn't have the fitting tight enough. So, let's see if it still leaks. I just tightened it up off camera. Still leaking. I can't tell what it's leaking from though. Okay, yet again, it's a couple days later here. I just replaced that red and blue fitting I had with a $30 Summit black fitting, which is all the other fittings on the car are Summit uh, fittings. Because off camera, I ran this pump a little bit longer and there was just the tiniest leak coming from somewhere on the feed. So, just replace the fitting. If that doesn't fix it, I'm pulling this radium hanger, I'm selling it, and I'm switching to the PHR hanger. I like the design of it better. It doesn't use these 90s that are O-ringed on top of it. Fingers crossed, let's fire this thing up. Still a leak from something. All right guys, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. It's not really the way I wanted it to end, um, but it is the way that it is. I tried a couple things off camera with that hanger and narrowed it down to that brand new banjo fitting on top being the problem. At this point, I don't really feel comfortable running the hanger, so I'm gonna replace it with a PHR hanger. It's gonna cost me quite a bit of money, but I don't want my car burning down. Um, I will say that these clips are like a month old. I've kind of struggled editing these videos. Um, it's kind of, it's a process, that's for sure. Uh, the Supra had its first start just here recently. I had a small problem. I had a W55 flywheel where I needed a W58, so it was causing interference. Well, just last night, put a new flywheel in it, got it all put together. It sounds awesome. It feels so good to hear this thing run after the months and of work and all the money I put into it. So hopefully here soon, I'll have a video of the thing running and driving, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, if you made it this far, drop me a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.